double coverage with the McCourty Twins podcast. Devin and myself started, I guess, three years ago. What brought upon this idea of a podcast? So here we go. Let's let's paint the picture. We're in New Jersey, sitting down in a, a, a popular city in New Jersey called Jersey City. Uh, we meet with the guys from Mulca Sports, and we just say, you know, it'd be cool to do a podcast, and there's graphics in there. But the seed was planted before that. One of the guys at Mulca, Pat Capra, had brought the idea of trying to do one kind of throughout the NFL of different guys in different cities. So we kind of had already been thinking about a, a podcast just in general. Um, yeah, I would say the podcast really started as a small idea, like this would be cool. After that, I would say, you know, especially from us doing it, you know, you put microphones down, you get a background, we just go. Yeah, you try to just make it organic as possible. And I think the seed was planted, and I think I kind of kept putting it off like, we would talk about it. I'm like, man, that just seems like a lot of work. Like, get on here and talk for an hour. And then, like you just said, when we ended up on the same team, it was just like, all right, that's kind of where it all started and where we, how we've gotten to where we are today. Yeah. Uh, when people tune into our podcast, I mean, when you talk about what do you want the listeners to take away, I know for me, uh, I just want people to tune in and see us as two brothers that – love each other, hate each other, and are forced to be around each other. And we just get on here and we try to have fun and make you feel like you're sitting in the living room with us and we're just having a conversation, not only about sports, uh, but what's going on in current events. And I think in our thought process, it's like we're in training camp. We have that long break before practice and it's just camaraderie within the locker room. Guys are just talking about whatever topic comes up. Uh, that's why we try to do our group chat segment, different things that kind of make it that organic feel of what you just have, the conversations that you have in your everyday life. Yeah, and I think we want people to journey along with us from week to week. You know, you don't watch this show. Like, you're not always going to get the same thing each week. I would say even from, like, a personality energy standpoint, you, like you said, you want the people to feel like they're there with you. So um, if it's been a tough 2020 and we jump on the podcast like we did during the quarantine and the wind down, it was rough for people. So when we jumped on there Sunday night, we want to bring energy. We want to make you happy, upbeat. Um, but then different things go on and we have different topics and we talk about things. We have kids. Yeah. we uh, And they've been in the podcast. They dictate a lot of it. So I think it's just get people get an organic feel for who you are and what you're going through from a week to week standpoint. It's cool for us to have this podcast, I think, because when people see us, whether it's on the field, off the field in interviews, I always hope one thing people walk away from is like, man, like seems cool to have a conversation or, or I would love to hang out with that guy. He seems down to earth. And I think the podcast has opened that door to let people see exactly like who we are. And I think for both of us, we don't really take that for granted because we understand the platform we have. So it's important for us to not only have a platform and have content that we go and do these things, but it's also important for us to be like, hey, man, like this is us. You know, you support us. Uh, you come to our casino night, you come and watch us play football, you buy a jersey, like, hey, come hang with us, you know, come have a good time with us. Um, and I think that's what the podcast has brought us. It's brought us just that great feel, you know, like we've been places and someone says, man, I love this on your podcast. And this whole time we didn't think anybody was watching. <laughs> um, and it's cool to, you know, say that like, man, these guys, they watch us like they, they don't watch us for you know, are we going to make an interception? Are we going to make a tackle? They watch just to say, hey, man, I'm hanging with the McCordy twins. And I see Devin's crazy kids always in the background. Always. You know, so uh, they love the family more than us. Probably. Yeah, and I think the honesty that we're able to bring, and I think for both of us at this point in our careers, it started off of just like, hey, like, let's do this thing. Like, who knows what we want to do life after football? This could be kind of our little portfolio. And I think it's grown. I think over time, you start to see more angles of it. And it's just like me and you have talked multiple times. It's just like, hey, you can sit down and do an interview with a B reporter, or you can go talk to somebody when you re-sign your deal. And now they're posting it and their name and is attached and the sources and all of that stuff. And it's the realization is just that, we all have our own platform. You have no reason to go on NFL Network or ESPN to be able to announce breaking news about yourself because you can just turn on a camera and you can break whatever news you want to break. And it gives us an opportunity to be honest about things. We can come on here, and especially like you said, during that quarantine, our ability to get on there, whether it was a decision the league made, uh, the NFL, whatever it was, 
our own opinions. And you get to a point in life where you're like, hey, I'm going to give my opinion. Those who like it, appreciate you. Those that don't, I appreciate you too. And we can talk about it. But you don't care as much about, hey, how does this make me look? How does that? You're just trying to go on there and be honest and be able to connect with the people that are watching. One advice I, I would give to myself when we first started doing the podcast would just be to like go, you know, like don't think that whatever you write down or whatever you have kind of in your run of show or scripted that you have to like, all right, we have to hit this topic, then that topic, then this topic. It has to be this time um, and just go. And I think, you know, like I said, our first one that we did, it was like we were looking at the laptop back and like, all right, all right I'm going to do this topic. Jay's got to know he got the next topic. Then it'll go back and forth. Um, and then I would say as we kind of extended, and especially when we had guests on, we were like our first guest, we had all of these things mapped out. Like, all right, you're going to ask this. And then we started going and it turned into our normal conversation. It's so funny you say that because like me and him can be exact opposite sometimes when it comes to that. Like he's just, he'll put, he'll kind of turn it on, have a, a bunch of scrum and just be all right, like I'm good. And I'll be like, yeah, but we didn't really talk about X, Y, and Z. And I think that's what kind of makes it fun, especially if you're doing it with somebody else, is to enjoy whatever your creative process is. Don't stress about it. However you are as a person, if you're somebody that needs everything nailed out and you have to have it all scripted, then do that and then go full speed ahead. If you're somebody that just likes to let it unfold, don't be afraid. Embrace that and, and kind of just go full steam ahead. Yeah, I'm definitely more or less just wing it. This is a cool time when you talk about your podcast. You get to say like, man, who was your favorite guest? Man, who were some good guests? And then you sit back and, and you, you act like you had all these great guests. Like, I think, you know, obviously Big Vince. Big Vince was uh, funny, I think, just because of my relationship with him. And then... It was hilarious. A lot of times, like, as twins, like, when one of us has a good relationship with someone, we both end up having a good relationship, like, cracking jokes. Um, so, to me, that was that was probably one of the coolest. Him and, and Dave Andrews mm -hmm. came on. And Dave's a quiet and those are two, And those are two of our early ones, too. Yeah, and Dave's quiet. But once he, like, got in here, he started talking. And then, you know, Dave texted us after and was like... Hey man, I think we need to edit this part and that part. Like, I don't know if I should have said that. And I was like, relax, buddy. Yeah. I, and I would say another angle, those guys were like just fun to talk to. And I would say another angle would be um, Logan Ryan and Jarrell Casey. And the reason I say those two was because I felt like it was an opportunity and a platform for them to get some things off their chest. And like, we get on there and it just flows. You know what I mean? Guys airing grievances or different things. So I would say each guest brings this kind of unique thing about it to the show. And for us, it's always fun because everybody you bring on is some form or fashion a friend that you've gotten a chance to know over the time. And uh, to be able to do that and have fun with that, and especially uh, like you just said, sitting on this side of it, having to come up and think about the questions, trying to make it that's fun. Been, that's been fun, though. No doubt like about it. Like researching people. Like when we did Mark Sanchez... Um, down at the Super Bowl and like you found like you researched all of this different stuff um, but I would say by far our favorite has to be uh, Mama Matt having Mama Matt on. yeah she, and I would say her too because her growth over time of just like from Doing interviews yeah like you're a high school student and they realize oh he's getting a scholarship oh let's talk to their mom because there's two of them and like talking to her and she'd be a little nervous and then now fast forward all the way to like 2018 where she cool. has Cool Magoo. Magoo. And she has her own media session down at the Super Bowl. So that, that's that been awesome to see. Being on the other side of kind of the interview and the show of usually we're on as a guest and somebody's asking us a question and we've kind of had to flip that around. And I think uh, you get better as time flows. I think some specifically is just transitions. When you go from one topic to the next topic, being able to have that nice transitional piece to be able to move it and, and flow the show along. And, and then just coming up with questions. And uh, as of late, I've, I've watched a lot of, you mentioned it before, of David Letterman's uh, show on Netflix. And I just think as you start to do it, it's just like, well, that's the pinnacle. And you're just like, I'm probably never getting anything close to that. But like, that's what you're trying to achieve. Or like, when we bring this person on, how can we make them extremely comfortable to be able to just be themselves uh, within the in interview or the conversation? Yeah, and I think that's what you learn. Like, it's different each time. Like, we get some people that we ask two questions, but we talk for 15 minutes. Chase Winovich. They, like, when they come on, they want to talk. 
and then you get another guy or another woman and it's like, all right, like we really got to, you know, try to ask a question, then a follow up question. Um, and you get to see like, you know, when we get interviewed, some of the, the things that, you know, the people who are interviewing you are going through, like how they're trying to come up with questions, how they're trying to get an answer that they think the person watching the viewer will be like, oh, like, OK, that's the answer to a question that I always had. I'm mm-hmm. happy he asked that question. So um, it's, it's a good amount of thought, I would say, that goes into those questions. Um, and I think the biggest thing is we're trying to improve is like guys that we don't know that well when we get them on, how to just get that conversation mm-hmm. flowing. Um, and that's been cool. And, and I would say a part of that is researching and finding, like you just said, topics and passions that they have that once we bring it up, they get going and then mm-hmm. the conversation takes off. And that's the hardest thing to do with time restraints because you're still preparing for a game each and every week. And then you come in, you're trying to hit. So those are the tough things that you gain more respect for uh, the people that actually do it for a living. Yeah, I think. As we do this, you know, it's fun because we try to focus on like all of the current topics, topics that come up. Um, And I I would say I'm excited just because when you do this show now and we've gone through like 2020 and now like going forward, it's going to be so many like big topics like the NBA comes back early. How's the NFL season end with the playoffs and the Super Bowl? Um, So I get excited about those topics because... I think all of those topics, those conversations are being had at work, at home, around the table. You never know table. what the next topic is going to be. Yeah, like, but all of the topics are happening in somewhere, like mm-hmm. any group setting, on teams, in schools. Anyone can relate. And I think when we talk about those topics, I, I always get that vibe of like, man, we were just talking about that the other day when people watched the show. Um, so I, I just get excited by some of like just the everyday topics that go on. Um, in our country, and then also um, getting the opportunity to even like highlight some things that we do, mm-hmm. like um, working justice, with like Compassion International, um, who helps you know kids with extreme poverty around the world. Like you said, the social justice stuff, the Players Coalition, like all of those things. Sickle Cell, always being able to highlight different mm-hmm. things, doing that. Yeah, and I think for me personally, uh, like as you as you think about topics and you think about kind of seasons and phases and stages of your life, both of us obviously towards the back end of our career doing this show, you kind of get excited about, all right, like what's next? You know what I mean? Like we're doing this show. You're able to do it while you're playing football. You're able to uh, articulate and discuss football, things off the field. And as you do, you start to wonder, all right, like how, how long is this going to go on? Like, am I going to do this post football? Like what's, is it, are the topics going to be the same? What's it going to be like? So I think as you talk about like upcoming topics in the immediate future, Dev hit on a plethora of them. And I think for like me personally, it's just like, all right, like how, how do we how do we maneuver this thing? Do we keep it going? Was it kind of short lived for a football standpoint? So like those are the things I think that we're trying to do is create opportunity and get the the thought process going of just like, all right, like, hey, we we enjoy doing this. Ah, it was fun, but now nah, mm-hmm. let's throw it to the side now. But I just think overall the podcast helps you kind of look at your life as we get on here and we discuss being fathers and we discuss the adversities we go through. We discuss being husbands. Uh, it's a really cool opportunity to kind of just sit back and, and talk and be able to get your thoughts out to one another and to the viewers uh, about what you have going on in life. Yeah, so... Uh, for anybody you want to check out the podcast, uh, you can always go to uh, our social media on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, but McCordyTwins.com has all of that. You can go YouTube, iTunes, search Double Coverage of McCordy Twins, and you can check all that stuff out. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, just make sure when you go on there, you hit the subscribe button. And every time you watch the show, you will hear something. Mama, we made it! And all that means is we're doing something we love having fun with it, and we feel like everyone can relate to that. Whenever you accomplish a goal, you just scream, Mama, we made it, or Mama, I made it, however you feel. No doubt about it.